Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today we're going to do the Bright Zigzag Stripes Crochet Blanket. This is a blanket that is really neat. It has texture to it and it's really not that hard but you have to just pay attention to the pattern. So let me break down this pattern for you and get you started. So let's break down this pattern. So when I was doing this and I just want to be completely honest with you here, I really struggle with this pattern. It's one of the ones that I struggle with the most in, the, in recent time and the reason for it is that I kept getting my counts wrong because I was really kind of getting hung up on the uh, lots of different um, instructions that were included. I'm not saying the instructions are written wrong because they're not but it's a lot to wrap your head around. So what I was taught as a kid is that when things don't make sense for me is that you break it down even further. So what I did is that I did myself a diagram and I did it just hand drew it so that I could do a sample and then I had Daniel come along and just do up a nice professional example of what this instruction is. So here is the diagram um, that is provided by Daniel that you can easily follow and I'm going to be using this diagram to be able to help you to get started because once you get started and understand this pattern you're going to notice that it's repeating rows number two, three, four, and five and then go back to two, three, four, and five all throughout the whole thing. So once you get started it's actually not hard but I want to show you this particular diagram here because I think if you can understand this you can do this pattern pretty easily. So here's a sample of what this looks like. So you're going to notice is that you're going to have raised ridges so you have a beautiful texture work. Let me turn it over. There's no texture on the back. It's completely flat. So the front side of the project has these raised ridges just like you see. So it's a repeat pattern of rows number two, three, four, and five and two and three, four, and five. So once you understand this pattern it goes along pretty easily. I used here Karen Tea Cakes yarn here and they were really quite amazing and it's transitioning on its color on its own. So if you watch this green you'll notice it comes back and then it changes on its own and then etc. So if you really want to use your Karen Cakes for this kind of project you would probably have some really stellar looking um, waves in your project. But what I want to do is I don't want to take you back to here to the diagram and let's start deciphering this together and uh, we'll break it down and then we'll start our sample together. So going back to the instructions you'll notice that stripe pattern. So this is giving you what the breakdowns are for the different colors that you see here and it's giving you the order in which they're appearing. So on page number two is when you actually physically start the blanket and if you want to start the blanket exactly as you see you can chain 136 and then continue it along and then once you get to row number five you go back to row number two. So it says repeats rows two and five to, which forms the, to form the pattern. So the pattern is the actual color. So you keep repeating rows number two, three, four, and five until you get to the size that you would like to do. So it's a really kind of an easy pattern to be able to follow. It has pom poms if you look really carefully on the one side. I just noticed that. I never saw it before. <laughs> Shows how much I'm paying attention. But you can add pom poms to the edge if you would like to and on the um, side edges you can just um, put um, just half double crochets evenly down the side. For myself I'd probably leave it off but that's completely up to you and your creativity and what you want. But really the fun part is in the diagram right here and let's go through that carefully. So here is a crochet diagram and if you want to do the blanket as is just the way it's showing it's chaining of 136. Now the neat thing about it is that people will always ask me, Mikey I want to change the size. What is this stitch count in order to change the size? So the stitch count in order to do it is called the multiple. It's multiple 19 plus 3. So you go 1, so you, when you chain you go 1, 2, 3 all the way to 19. Decide if it's big enough, yes or no. And if not go through 1 through 18 or 1 through 19 one more time. Decide if it's big enough, yes or no. And if it's not big enough go 1 through 19 again. Once you're satisfied with the width of your particular chain then you just chain an additional three and you'll keep yourself in balance with this project. So you're going to notice that it's actually pretty easy to be able to follow. So what you're going to notice is that you have all the different symbols here that appear up here. So you'll, you can see what they, what those mean and you can see that we're just going to just kind of follow our way through. So there's a few things that you need to be paying attention to and it's really more important in row number three if anything about being able to skip the amount of stitches in order to make things work. So as you're working your chains all the way you can do 136 or chain in multiples of 19 and then add three at the end of your chain and then you're just going to half double crochet yourself and you have to half double crochet yourself a certain amount of stitches. So third chain from the hook you'll half double crochet into that one and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So you end up with a total of nine half double crochets in the end. 
This chain two here counts as nothing. Okay, you notice that there's no stitch into this. This is just a builder. So that's that's where I was getting confused at the, right at the very beginning of the pattern. So once you become and get all these done, then you're going to put this cluster here. Okay, so it's a half double crochet uh, two together. So you put this one and then you skip one and then put this next one over. So you've gotta watch these here. These are a cluster, that's what they've called it. So you're half double crocheting to this one, you skip this one and half double crochet the next and bring it together as two together. And then you half double crochet yourself a back up the hill. So you go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So what I can tell you here is that when you're going up and down the hills, not including the side pieces, it's always gonna be seven up and seven down. What happens in the top is that on the eighth one, you'll put two halves in the same one and then in the next one, you'll put two halves and then seven all the way back down. So then when you get all the way to the bottom, you're gonna do what you did here. The next one, skip one and the next one here becomes two together, half double crochet and you go all the way back up. So you go up and down in this motion. So when you get to the final edge here, or the final edge that you see here, you're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you'll half double crochet in the final nine. So as you work your way then up to row number two, you're gonna chain two which counts as a stitch. And this is what I was getting confused about in this particular pattern is that on here it's not included, but here it is included. So every time you hit now in row number two, this first chain two does count as a stitch. So you're gonna just half double crochet, or sorry, you're gonna double, you're gonna chain up two and double crochet in the back post only all the way across. You'll notice in the bottoms that you're not putting two together. You'll notice in the tops that you're not putting extra at the tops. You are just putting a double crochet in the back post in every stitch across. Row number three, we're gonna chain up a total of five which include which counts as a treble plus a chain one, treble into the same one and then chain one, treble into the same one and then chain one and then you skip one and then you treble, skip one, treble, skip one, treble. So you notice that there's no chains in between here. So after you've skipped one here, this one, skip one and this one become two treble together and then you work your way back up the hill. So skipping the first one treble, skip the next one treble, skip the next one treble and then what you have is chain one and then by skipping one you put this treble. So there's three trebles in there and then they have chain ones that separate it. You will notice that there is no treble in between where these two are. That's one thing I was getting hung up on as well. So the very next one you start trebling right away. Chain one, treble, chain one, treble into the same one and then chain one, skip one and then treble, treble, treble and making sure you skip and you just keep going all the way across. So then what happens then in row number four is that you are just going to uh, do a double crochet in each stitch across. That includes the chain one spaces. So you gotta just make sure you gather up your chain one spaces and put a, a double crochet in there and just work your way across. You'll notice at the bottom you're not doing anything fancy but make sure that you even do the chain one spaces that are in the top of the hills. And then finally in row number five you're going to just chain two counts as a double crochet and you're gonna half double crochet into the first section just like you uh, were doing down here and then what happens here is that the next one here after you get it done. So we're gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So there will be nine stitches that includes this chain two and then this one, skip one and this one is two together. So I'm noticing here as I'm doing this here, there, this is a back post as well. Okay, so don't forget that. And then just work your way up the hill. So going up the hill, how many is there gonna be? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. And where did we see seven before? We saw it down here, okay? So we saw it down here when we were going up the hill, just like you see. So this row number five is actually kind of what you've done with number one. It's just the only difference is that you're not playing within the chain. So I know this was a lot of to explain, but it's really not a hard pattern once you get started, but you just have to pay attention to really rows number two, three, four, and five and continue to do so. So let's see if you know what you're doing. Let's try a sample now. So let's begin, you can just use your Karen Simply Soft yarn if you wish and you're gonna need a five millimeter size H crochet hook in order to play. I am substituting using Karen one pound and I'm using a six and a half millimeter size K. So you can either chain 136 as per the pattern or you can just chain in multiples of 19 and then add three at the very end. So just chaining over, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So there is one multiple of 19. So I'm gonna do one more multiple of 19 just to say I did it. So one, two, three, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, six, uh, 16, 17, 18, and 19. So once I'm satisfied with the width of it, I'll just add an additional three and that'll take me back in balance then to be able to keep this chain in balance. So let's do row number one together. So let's slowly do row number one together. So you have to keep an eye on the counts, especially in the very beginning as we begin. So I'm going to ask you to go to the third chain from the hook. So just count back. So one, two, and three. Get to the back loop only and I want you to half double crochet. Okay. And I want you to half double crochet into that. So now what we need to do is that we need to work our way down the valley in order to get to the other side. So what I want to do is that with this one here, I need to count what I see. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So with this one here, I need a total of nine half double crochets in a row. Don't worry about this chain two that you just had. You're not gonna count that as anything. So we want nine of these half double crochets. You've already done one. So let's count that one as one. And then this one is two and then three, four, uh, this is gonna be four. And this is five. This is six and seven, eight and nine. Okay, so you have nine half double crochets. The chain two does not count as anything. So now we're gonna do two half double crochets together and this is called the cluster. So you're gonna work it over three stitches. So you're gonna uh, insert into the one here. You're gonna skip the next one and then go to the third one to finish off. So wrap the hook and going into the first one. Okay, and pull through and leave it on your hook. So don't do anything more with that. Skip the next one and then wrap the hook again and go to the second one over and then pull through. So you'll have five loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all five and that was a half double crochet cluster. So as I mentioned before, now we're in the middle of the project. So whenever you're in the middle, you're gonna go up and down and there's gonna be seven half double crochets going up and always seven half going down. So let's do seven half double crochets going up the hill. So one and this is two, this is three, four, this is five, six, seven. So now you have your seven half double crochets in a row and I can count those to two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So in the eighth one here, we wanna put two half double crochets into the same one. So this is the top of the hill. So this is the top of the mountain peak. So you put two into that one and then right directly in the next one, you put two in the next one and then we're gonna start going down the hill. So how many stitches going down the hill when you're in the middle of the project? It's gonna be seven. So it's always seven going up, seven going down. So let's do seven half double crochets in a row. So one and two, three, This is four, this is five, six, and seven. So seven went down the hill. So now you can kind of really see that you're, you're getting the spikes going up and down. So now we're at the bottom of the hill. So in the bottom of the hill, we have to just look over three stitches. The first one's gonna be um, caught in. We skip the next one and then we finish it off in the next one. So let's do a half double crochet uh, cluster. So wrap the hook going into the next one, pull through, skip the next one, wrap the hook and go to the second one over. And now you have five loops on your hook and you continue. So just pull it through. So to continue to going up and down the hills as you're working away across, you're just gonna do the same motion. 
So going up the hill will always be seven. At the top of the hills the next two will have two half double crochet and then seven coming down and then just doing what I just showed you here at the bottom of the hills. So when you're finishing off when on your chain we had a total of nine on the edge here. So the other side should also have nine. So as you're finishing up and as long as your stitch counts are right there will be uh, nine half double crochets in a row. So one and two I'm hoping I'm right. <laughs> This is three. This is four. It's five. Six. Seven. And eight. And nine. This is in the last one. Just like there. So then you end up having your nine then on the end. So this is what it will look like. It's just an up and down motion and then we're gonna carry on then to row number two. So row number two is the start of the repeat. So you repeat rows number two through five over and over. So as you start row number two we're gonna chain two and that does count as a stitch. So we don't wanna do anything on the top of that stitch here. We wanna just go to the next one. So what we're going to do in this whole row is that we're gonna do a back post double crochet. So to do that we're gonna wrap the hook and come in from behind. So wrap the hook and going in from behind Okay, it's in the side of the post and then pop it back out to the back end. Okay, so to the other side. So it comes out the, the back end and then pull through and then pull through two and two. That's a back post double crochet. So let's uh, do that again. So just go to the next post. So wrap the hook going in from the back side. Just grab that post so then go back to the other side and then just finish it. So from the back, so wrap from the back in and just finish it off as a double crochet. And you're gonna do every stitch like this. So there's no tops or bottoms on row number two. It's just every stitch gets a back post double crochet. One thing I wanna point out to you is that where you wanna pay attention to this the most is on the top of the valleys because you have two stitches in the same one here and here. Sometimes this looks like it's one massive stitch. It's just a visual but there's actually two there. So make sure that you do use each one individually for a back post double crochet. So please do that all the way across. This is creating the ridges that you see within the project. So back post double crochet and uh, when I come back then I will have that done and we'll carry on to row number three. Just one more thing before I let you go here at the base. Remember that was the cluster so you went into the first one, skipped the one and then went into the next one. This is classified as one stitch so when you go around this one you come in from the one side and just go across because that's classified as one stitch and then just back post around it. Okay so that one, that whole section is just one stitch in this particular row. Okay so whenever you see that at the bottom of the valley. So continue along. I'll see you at the end of this row. So as you work your way all the way back to the other side, remember that the other side had a chain two when you started. You do not include that as part of it and it's just, it's just one thing that it just left out. So you wanna make sure that you leave that out of position because it's, it was just a builder for that very first time. So let's move on to row number three. So row number three we're going to establish the trebles that begin to skip things over. So what we want to do is that we wanna pay attention to where the centers are. It just makes it a little bit easier when we go to start. So let's just start on the side and we wanna chain five which counts as a treble plus chain one. So let's just chain that together. So one, two, three, four. That's your treble and then an extra chain, your fifth chain is your chain one. So exactly in the same stitch I want you to treble. So wrap the hook twice and then going into the same stitch pull through, pull through two and two and two and then chain one. So ch finish it with a chain one and then treble again. Into the same stitch and then chain one. So now we're gonna start skipping stitches in order to work our way down. So we skip the next stitch and we treble into the next one after that. So we've already just finished with the chain one if you remember. So skipping one we just treble into the next one over. So we no longer chain one, we just skip one and we treble into the second one over. And we're gonna do that one more time. So just wrap the hook twice, skip one and then we're going to go into the second one over for a treble. 
So now we're heading towards the bottom of this. So you can see that this is the middle of the bottom here. So you can see that we're not gonna touch that because we wanna jump over that. So we wanna play with the one before it and the one after. The nice thing about it is that we have to skip one anyway so we're in the right position. But if you can visually identify this it makes it a lot easier for you to be able to do it. So to do this, this is gonna be a treble together is that we're gonna wrap the hook twice, skip one, go to the second over, pull through, pull through two and two and just hold it. Skip the next one and then travel into the next. So wrap the hook twice, go into the second one over, pull through, pull through two and two and hold. So now you have three loops that are, that are put together. Just wrap and pull through all three loops. I'm gonna show that to you one more time. So I'm gonna pull out and just redo and show you one more time. So I'm gonna re-demonstrate the bottom of the hill once again. So if you're continuing along, and I just showed you this but I'll go a little slower, is that you're going to skip one and then you're going to then start and put that one, skip the next one and this one together. So if you're keeping in balance, it'll all work out for you. So skipping one and what you need to watch for is the middle. So this is the middle one so we don't play in that one, we play on either side and when you're skipping one, you should be ending up in that same position anyway. So wrap the hook twice and then go to the second chain over or second stitch over and pull through, pull through two and two and hold it. Skip the next one and then just go into the next one after that. Wrap the hook twice and then going in and pull through, pull through two and two. And therefore you're going to put these together by just pulling through all three loops. So you can see right at the base of the, of the hill you have that. So now we're gonna start working our way up the chain now or up the hill and so to start we just skip the next one and we treble right immediately into the next one after that. So you're noticing that we're not chaining one in between. So then we just treble again so we skip the next one, go to the next one after that and treble and then treble one last time so skip one and go to the next one over. So when you're working up the hill the three that are in here, there's no chain ones that separate them. We had no chain ones when we came down the hill as well. So if you can remember that, it makes it a lot easier. But now we're ready to go up over top of the hill. So we're gonna chain one first. So skipping the next one and this one here, if you look at it, that these are um, two stitches in the first one here and two into the next. You saw that before. So when you're looking at this, so when you skip one, that's the one you're gonna go into which is in the first section of the two that are in the top of the hill. So just a treble into that, that one. So skipping one treble and then chain one treble again and then chain one and then treble one last time. Okay, so now we've done half the hill. So now we're gonna do uh, the half of the top of the hill. So now we're gonna do the other half. So we immediately just treble into the next one. So we're not putting a chain one to separate those out. And then you put a chain one. And then treble into the same one again. Chain one and then treble in again, the same one. And then finish it off with the chain one and then work your way down the hill. So if you chain one, you're just gonna treble into the next, sorry, when you chain one, you skip one and you uh, treble into the next. And then just treble again, so skip the next one, go to the next one after that. And then finally uh, just treble one more time, skipping the next one and going to the next one and then you're back at the base of of this again. So let's cover how to do the base again. So let's treble. So we're gonna treble, skip one and you're gonna hold it together so you're not gonna finish it. Skip the next one which is the very middle of the, of the base and you're gonna begin to treble into the one after that by skipping it and then pull through all three. So as you work your way back up the hill, so you just keep on going up and down the hill just in the same fashion just like you see it and then to go back up the hill then remember just skip one, treble into the next one, skip one, treble into the next. Okay, skip one and then treble into the next one after that and then what you should end up doing is that once you, uh, you're gonna chain one after that one and then you're gonna go into the very first one over here and you were going to put in um, a treble 
a chain one, treble again, chain one and treble again. And then that concludes off how to do the row number three. So you can see it from this point of view is that if you understand what's going down the hill and what's going up the hill and understanding how to control the top of the hills, you're good to go. So that concludes row number three. Let's turn our work and go for row number four. So now that we've got this part done, really the hard work is really in this row. It's just a matter of keeping count. So the only time you ever have to keep count again is in row number five and row number five is very similar to row number one here where we had to skip one at the base in order to keep it going. So let's move on to a row number four. So we're gonna chain three which counts as a double crochet for the first one and then in each chain one space and stitch you're going to put in one double crochet. So right in the first chain one space just put in a double crochet there. This one here is the next stitch so just go into the stitch. The next one is in a chain one space so just double crochet in the space. The next one here is a stitch and the next one here is going to be a chain one space right here. So you really wanna pay attention to where your chain one spaces are which you know that are in the uh, in the tops of these hills and then you know everything down here there's no chain one spaces so you could just double crochet until you get to where you're appearing back on the top of the hill where you see it again. So just carrying along now into each stitch because there's no chain one spaces that separate them. You're gonna do one double crochet into each And so I'm really just kind of paying attention to where those chain one spaces are which are starting right away. So they're starting at the top of the hills. So let's go into the first chain one space and then you just go into the next stitch and then chain one space and then stitch, chain one space. And now if you look at it here, this is the middle section here so we're gonna go into a stitch and then the next one is a stitch and then you start working down the hill. So again into the chain one spaces and into the stitches that you're going all the way and you're gonna follow along the whole row like that of just one double crochet in each stitch and chain one space. So carry on for row number four and then we'll meet back up for row number five. So once you get all the way to the other side you just wanna turn your work and now do row number five. Now row number five is very similar to here to row number one. So we're gonna carry on and remember there's gonna be nine a total of half double crochets in a row and then we have to skip over a certain uh, one here in the middle and then we do seven up and then we do two at the top of the one side, two in the top of the other and then seven down, seven up and etc. until you get to the other side where there'll be finally nine on the end ending of over here. So let's say begin we're going to chain two which does count this time as a stitch. Coming into the very next one you're gonna half double crochet. So just count this as number two. So just count that chain one as our chain two as one and this is two and you want a total of nine. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight and nine. So you have nine in a row. So now you're at the very base and you can tell that here by this section down here where everything is in the middle. So you're going to just go into the very next one. So just wrap the hook and going into the next one, pull through and hold it. Skip the next one and then half double crochet in the next one after that. Pull through and hold everything. You have your five loops again. Pull through all five and then work your way back up the hill. So it's gonna be a total of seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven. And if your counts are right you are going to be in the top of your hill. So then the top of the hill. So if your counts are right all you're just gonna be is in the top of the hill. So you see in the top of the hill like these two are together. So these are the two tops. So this is one side and this is other. So you're just gonna put two half double crochets in the one side and you're gonna put two half double crochets in the other one right beside it and then work your way down the hill and there will be seven in a row. So let's do that again. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six and seven going down the hill and once you're at the base of the hill okay you're going to just put the one together skip the one and go into the next one. Okay so you put your half double crochets together and then working your way back up. So there will be seven here at the top. So there will be a total of two at the one side, two in the other and then seven down. But when you're coming to the very final, the last nine stitches here will each be a half double crochet when you're coming to an edge. So let's count those out. So one, two, three, four, five, six, okay seven, Okay, and a total of nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then eight and nine. So now that I have that done, I can just turn my work now and restart again from row number two. Remember row number two is just starting with these back post double crochet one into each and then you go to three, four and five and then start over again from two, three, four and five. And this is how you do this particular pattern. It's not a hard pattern and once you get established it'll be really amazing. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. We'll see you again real soon. Bye bye.